All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and we're going to get right into it. All of my jam stars. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BKA the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video. Oh, yeah, I got the hair braided. I got it braided. I got hang time, too, man. Look at it. Look, I got the ninja headband on, so you probably can't even really see it, but I got hang time. I got hang time, man. Look at it touching my collar. Look at that touching holler, make you holler, boy. Woo! Brady J in the building with the All City Live TV headband. I'm going to have that headband on for y'all tomorrow, man. But you know it is what it is. Look, today's day, Thanksgiving Day ham or Thanksgiving Day turkey. I don't want to put no food up there because it's too early. I don't want nobody's stomach to get messed up or none of that stuff. But Thanksgiving Day ham or turkey. If I had the choice, if I had to choose, I'm, 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 I'm going to eat both of them. If I still ate meat, but I, don't, I haven't eaten meat in like two years. But if I did still eat meat, I would have both. But if I had to make a choice, that Thanksgiving Day candied ham, I say that Thanksgiving Day candied ham with the candied yams. Woo! <laughs> yams. I had to have that, the candied ham with the candied yams. Because, you know, if I had to choose, it's always going to be that because the turkey is always a little bit dry. Now, my uncle... Used to boil, um, used to do the turkey in the uh, drop it. You know how you um, not boil the turkey, but you know what I'm talking. About. Fry the turkey. You know you got the big old, you got the big old cylinder, cylindrical thing. You drop the turkey in there, you fry. He could do it like that, and it would come out really good and not as dry. And it, it really depends on who's cooking it too. But turkey by nature is a little bit drier. So that's why if I had to choose, I'm going to have that candied ham with that candied yams and the beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkey, you name it. Woo. And then do you like the little, like, little chicken tenders? Do y'all have chicken tenders? My family sometimes will do the chicken tenders and the little fish, a uh, little bit of fish, you know, sometimes. It depends on who is there. But anyway, y'all let me know, ham or turkey? on thanksgiving which one do y'all like the best damn the tradition anyway man we got to get right into it man mike warm in tweeting again somebody said hey mike what determines a player speed with the ball and you probably already seen this but look this is it it looks like speed with the ball is it's uh it's a a mixture so it's 30 percent 30 percent of it is your ball handling and then 70 percent of it is your actual speed so a player with 80 86 speed and 86 ball handling will have 86 speed with ball right conversely a player with 90 speed and 75 ball handling is gonna have 85 speed with the ball so you see what i'm saying like the pit like my player has 91 speed and 70 some odd ball handling so i would be here i, was, I got like 75 ball handling and i got i got 91 speed so I would go 91 speed right here and then 75 ball handling both. This is what I got. So I got like 86 speed with ball. That almost seems like a straight up average though, man, because it says 30% ball handling and the rest of it speed. Bro, that seems like a straight up average though. Let me let me check my calcula calculator. Uh, 90 plus 75 equals that divided by two. Yep, it, it definitely is. It definitely is 70%. Uh, it is weighted 70% more because if it was just a straight up average, it would be 82.5. I, I, my, my, it's more than my math ain't that fast. But this is a cheat sheet that Mike put out. He says that you can you can use this cheat sheet and you can you can pretty much get it. So a player with with uh, a player with 95 speed and 95 speed uh, 95 uh, ball handling 95 speed with ball. This is what you're gonna get. So all you gotta do, you take, you find whatever your speed is. And then you come across until you see what your ball handling is. I wish it went back this way a little bit more, but you can get a pretty good idea. All you got to do, man, I'm not about to tell y'all how to how to, how to to do something weighted, you know, 30% uh, or, or whatever. We, we, we're, not about to, we're not about to show y'all how to do a weighted average on the show, man, because all of y'all are in, intelligible enough. But this is the NBA 2K Lab. This is posted by NBA 2K Lab, so... This shows two things. Mike is is uh Mike is uh aware of 2K Labs and they know that some of the stuff that they do is right and there's some really good work. And uh you know uh but also they can't deny you know that some of the stuff the 2K Lab does is real. So like I said, use that cheat sheet. 
Uh, we know that you don't slow down to a dang on crawl anymore because your speed with ball isn't, isn't trash. So like, you know, you're dribbling. Is it, I, th I think it's a fair way to do it this year because in previous years, it was just a number. And like my guy would have like 50 speed with ball just because I'm not a dribbler. And I'm like, bro, I'm fast. Like I might not be, I might be wild with the ball dribbling, but it, it, it wouldn't be as effective. But I'm not gonna be slow just because I touch the ball and you do slow down to a crawl. Like that, that, that's insane to me. So I'm glad that's something that they changed, but that's the cheat sheet right there. Check out that cheat sheet. It will let you know uh, where you stand. Uh, speaking of NBA 2K Lab, NBA 2K Lab put out a video yesterday on Hot Start and how it how it impacts your your shooting and all of that. Now this was done with um you know with Hot with Hot Start with the player with a 93 ball or what have you, and it just really says it it just really shows you. Oh well, this is a 70 rating. I'm sorry, but it shows you that you can use it and you do get a boost. But you get the big, they said you got the biggest boost um, if you had a 90 or so three ball and then you and you used it on gold or what have you, or or uh, silver. Anyway, you're gonna have to watch the video to find all that out. I just want y'all to know that the video is out there and if you're interested in using Hot Start, you are going to have to go watch the video. The link will be down in the description. They definitely say that it does work and it is worth using and it works until it doesn't, i.e. Once you take a shot with, with, with hot start, if you hit your first shot, here you go, right here, boom. If you hit your first shot with hot start, you get an increase until you miss. So what they were recommending is use hot start and use green machine in tandem with each other because with hot start, it helps you hit your first shot. And after that, it, can, it helps you. So if you use it with volume shooter, green machine, and hot start together because a uh, volume shooter helps you hit more shots as time goes along. Uh, hot start helps you hit your first shot. Volume shooter helps you sh helps you hit all subsequent shots, and then green machine helps you hit all the shots after you've made three greens. So it kicks in after your third green. So you hit two greens, and then green machine kicks in. So if you got hot start helping you on your first shot, um, you know all your other badges plus plus uh, volume shooter helping you on your second shot. By the time you get to your third shot, Green Machine should be kicking in. You should be spraying. But anyway, you got to go over there. Check that video out. And uh, it'll it'll let you know everything that you need to know about Hot Start. And finally, last but not least, man, I don't want to be a negative nasty or complain and all that good stuff. But 2K, I say 2K, y'all got to do something about the steals, brother. I don't care about passing lane steals. See, people think that when we say they have to tone down the passing lane steals or they got to do something, especially in the wreck, about the passing lanes. People think that we want to throw bad passes all over the map and just be just get away with it, get rewarded for it. That's an option only afforded to scrubs. Only scrubs can get away with, with throwing just willy nilly passes and you can't steal them. If you're a good player and you throw a good pass, that pass nine times out of 10 is gonna get picked off by somebody who's in no position to pick it off. It, it, it makes literally zero sense. In wreck and in and in wreck and most of the times in the park. Like, do, do I say the passing lanes are okay? They're okay, but they have to be toned down some just because I am sick of standing on the right wing attempting to pass the ball to the right corner and a center just spamming square can get that pass. He can't get that pass. What angle is that? There's no angle for him to like. Stolen passes that make sense don't happen in the game. The only passes in the game that, that, that get stolen are the ones that shouldn't get stolen. If a guy is 30 feet down court and I press the Y button to lob it over the guy right in front of me, right in front of me, and I want to pass it over his head down court 30 feet, I shouldn't throw a bullet pass where he can just spam it and get it. Like, I literally want to punch people when they do it because it's stupid but 2K rewards them for it. It's like, bro, why are you even spam? I'm playing the passing lane. I, I mean, I play the passing lanes in real, like, bro, if you play the passing lane, like, I know I, I probably talked about this last video. If you play the passing lane like that in real life, that means that you are anticipating. If you are anticipating, that means that you run the risk of getting backdoored to death, okay? When people wanna play the passing lanes, what you do 
is this. You fake pass, which doesn't work in the game, by the way. You fake pass, they go for the, they go for the steal. Their guy should immediately cut back door. You bounce pass it to him. Nine times out of 10, he either gets a layup or he goes to the rim, big man steps, you give it to the other big man, bang city. Dunk city, monkey dunk, whatever you want to call it. That's what happens when people gamble in real life. But in this game, they get rewarded for gambling. Now, this is what I think should happen because we know what happens. People just spam square anytime they see a person stop dribbling or get caught up or anything like that. If you press the square button, you should go for an all out steal. The penalty has to be greater. You can't let people reach in place because you can't steal a ball like that. If we can get some more realistic animations and get rid of the foregone four conclusion animations, then I think we'll be going a long way towards, you know, getting getting this thing right. But it's it's the the way it is right now. It's just not right. Stealing has to be addressed in the passing lane. I don't care about on ball steals because if you fix one, you effectively fix the other, right? Like last year, on ball steals and and you know uh, steals in the air, passing lane steals were ridiculous. When they fix one, they will fix the other. Because if you fix the on ball steals, you don't have to be scared and pass the ball and panic pass when somebody gets even close to you. But if you fix the air steals, then then uh, then you can pass the ball when somebody does. So if you fix one, you effectively fix the other one. But they that has to be addressed. Everybody's just standing there and spamming square and hoping that they get the steal. I don't mind that. But if they press the button in error, they need to be punished. You don't need to be like. You know that's what people are doing also just because of the fact that when you get an offense, when you get a defensive rebound in the game nine times out of ten, you get fouled immediately. It's not because they're trying to make the good play. It's because they're anticipating you passing the ball and they're just spamming the button. And so they're going to end up fouling the center or something. Or they, or they think it was like last year where it was you could get the cheap, the super cheap. Stick. Look, it needs to be addressed. We got to do something about it, man. Y'all going to make this video go over 12 minutes. It's not about to happen. It's got to go over 12 minutes, but it won't go over 12 minutes in like 35 seconds. Anyway. Let me know down in the comments if y'all, how should they fix the passing lanes? They have to, it has to be a bigger penalty, man. It has to be a bigger penalty for reaching for no reason. Maybe if you exceed reaching three times in a second, it makes you just run the half court or something like that or automatically foul. So they have to do something. Anyway, I'm gonna holler at y'all next time, man. Hope you guys have some happy holidays and I'm gonna catch y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, AKA Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Godspeed. And uh, yeah. It is what it is. Peace.